Hey, what is up, everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today on our road to WrestleMania. Uh, whenever there's not real big things about wrestling to talk about, I thought, honestly, I'd just go back to talking about the old days of wrestling, which I, when I was growing up, I thought were the glory days um, that I look back on and just say, man, I wish it could be easier and uh, just, just be like those days. Uh, today's video is going to be talking about the return of the Ultimate Warrior at uh, WrestleMania 8 at the Hoosier Dome. Um, I can honestly tell you that was probably the biggest return um, in, in my days uh, to wrestling. I know the first time that I ever watched uh, WrestleMania 8 when he came running out at the end of the, uh, the event uh, during the main event of uh, Sid versus Hulk Hogan. Uh, there was uh, Papa Shango ran down. Uh, to cause a disqualification in the main event. And then they started the, doing a two-on-one attack on Hulk Hogan. Um, Warrior came running out uh, to make the save. Warrior and Hogan, uh, the two biggest baby faces that there were in WBF, of course, you can remember, uh, they tagged together at uh, Survivor Series 1990 uh, in the ultimate survival match at the very end of the show where they brought back the winners. Um, from their Survivor Series matches to have one more. It ended up being Tito Santana, Hulk Hogan, and the Ultimate Warrior teaming up against, I believe, the whole Rick the Model team. I think it was Rick the Model, Martel, Warlord, Barbarian. I can't remember. who. It, it ended up being five on three. And uh, Warrior and Hulk uh, were both the winners. Um, then, of course, at you know SummerSlam 1991, they fought in the main event in Madison Square Garden in the match made in hell um, against the team of Sergeant Slaughter, General Adnan, and um, shoot, whatever the Iron Sheik's guy name was. Um, so I wasn't surprised to see him come back, uh, um, to, to come back and, and help Hulk. But I can honestly tell you that, you know, being force-fed um, what WF was giving me at the time, I, I can tell you that from the time he was fired <laughs> at uh, um, SummerSlam 1991, right after that show, I didn't even notice that the Ultimate Warrior wasn't around. I, I couldn't tell you if he had an injury. Uh, all I can tell you is that, you know, each and every week I was watching, you know, WF Superstars, WF Challenge, uh, watching, you know, basically every show that was on my TV. Never noticed he was gone. <laughs> So for them to hip hype up his return, um, it just back in those days, if if you left WWF to go to anywhere else, they basically treated you like you died. <laughs> there was no uh, you know uh, last man standing match. There was no uh, parade on the way out of the town. Basically, the last day you worked for them, they treated you like you died, and you were never there. They didn't talk about you on TV ever again. There was no like this day in history. Um, talking about, you know, his match against Rick Rude at, at uh, SummerSlam. It's just boom. That was it. So from SummerSlam all the way until WrestleMania, no Ultimate Warrior. Uh, I think that at that time, WWF, um, they were sort of just running on the momentum of Hulk Hogan. And he was dying out on uh, on fumes. Uh, he had left uh, a few times to, to go make... Um, Movies he had left to go make No Holds Barred, uh, basically in between WrestleMania 4 and WrestleMania 5. And Macho Man Randy Savage picked up the slack, they ran with the uh Mega Powers uh storyline. And I, I think that some people have said that Macho Man Randy Savage is the reason why they are fans of professional wrestling. I think the Macho Man might not have been as big a star he might have been like a 99 out of 100 compared to hulk being 100 out of 100 but he was just just as big he was he was right up there with her with him he was able to carry the ball with the storyline against macho man um against uh, the million dollar man andre the giant um everything they were doing all the way until they did uh the heel turn and ended up doing hogan versus savage and hogan got his belt back uh the build uh, to WrestleMania 8 was that Suburban Commando was going to come out and we were almost having what like we're having now is that, you know, the biggest story, uh, biggest competitors in WWE are finding out that they can go off and make movies. I think it's only going to be a matter of time before Roman Reigns gets a, a few more tastes of being into movies and maybe he goes and tries to do what 
uh, John Cena and The Rock have done. Um, I think those guys, um, if Cena and Rock were still able to compete, um, I think that uh, WWE would be at its top peak, must see television, but instead there's more money on the table for him to go out there. So at that point, Hogan uh, had made his uh, second movie, Suburban Commando. He hadn't yet made uh, Mr. Nanny, uh, where I think, I think, I, I, <laughs> I just think maybe Hogan in that, that role, definitely the commercials with him uh, wearing the tutu, I think that hurt him. To the point where maybe that's where he decided that, hey, these roles aren't rolling in. I, I made the wrong choice, and he had to go back um, to the world of wrestling. But uh, they, they did a lot of interviews uh, with Vince and Hogan on the way up to the, the road to WrestleMania, where Hogan was saying he thought that the match against Sid was going to be his last one. Um, at WrestleMania 8, we had uh, Macho Man Randy Savage win the WWF Championship. But at WrestleMania 7... He had lost a career match to the Ultimate Warrior, and um, he had been on pay-per-views, hyping up big shows, but it was few and far between. I don't even know if he was making uh, house show runs. I think it was just him thinking he was at the end of his career. Guys thought they retired a lot earlier than they do now. I mean, now you know, guys are probably going... If, if, if you think about it, those guys at WrestleMania 8 thought their careers were winding up. And Hogan wrestled WrestleMania 18. He WrestleMania he, he basically wrestled at WrestleMania 21. So, I mean, like, they, they had a lot left in the tank more than they thought they were. And uh, guys like Piper had moved into, like, commissioner roles. And, you know, they weren't really around to, to wrestle. They hadn't really built the future um, star when they signed Sid Justice to come over from WCW, um, they thought that he was going to be the next Hulk Hogan, and I, I'm not sure if they just needed Sid to, uh, to main event this show in a heel role. But if you look at the history, I mean, uh, SummerSlam, the next big event, Sid's not on that show. I mean, he's just gone playing softball he's already he's, he's already out so that wasn't going to work if you think of the next generation um you know Bret Hart and he does main event that SummerSlam show you can see Intercontinental Championship against Bulldog he had had the big match against Roddy Piper they were building him but he wasn't there yet Shawn Michaels a big piece just wrestled on WrestleMania 8 his first ever singles uh pay-per-view match um it was supposed to be against Marty, but he got um, arrested. So uh, they ended up using uh, El Matador in the opener um, uh, uh, against Sean. So they, they don't they don't really have anything going on. Vince had to go to the well uh, and basically say that Ultimate Warrior was the biggest star that he had uh, created. He was somebody that people wanted to see. So he had to basically pay the ransom of you know giving Warrior the money that. Um, Hogan was making. That was why Warrior left. Is that he wanted a bigger piece of the pie. He wanted to be treated like he was a box office uh, sensation. He was the champion. He wanted to be treated like that. He wanted uh, more money from the gate. He wanted more money on his contract. He wanted more money uh, for merchandise. And that just isn't the way that Vince McMahon did it. He basically worked on you know, the contract that you have. And then you know, as you move up the card, you get the bonuses that you deserve. At that time, Hogan still was the draw, even if Warrior was the champion, and um, Vince knew it, and that's why the check was what the check was. But Warrior wanted the same, so he had to, 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 to you know, t take Warrior to the bank and give him the money because they didn't have anybody else. But when Warrior came back, is is when basically WWF Vince McMahon were getting hit in with all the uh, steroid. Um, uh, cases the feds were really crashing in the doors trying to find out where these steroids were coming from whether Vince was supplying them whether if they had an inside man as a, as a doctor writing fake scripts and things like that um so warriors run when he returned at WrestleMania 8 did not last that long at all <laughs> he wrestles uh the WWF championship match against Macho Man one of the most forgotten about matches in my history of um, watching wrestling. I've seen SummerSlam 92. Um, I own it on DVD. But uh, I have 
no memory of anything that goes on. I think Flair gets involved because I, I don't think Flair's on that show, but he's, I know he's there. But I, I know lots of things about the Brett versus Davy Boy match. Um, I think that's the show that Legion of Doom rides out on the Harleys. But I, I don't know why SummerSlam 92 is just an ancient memory in my mind that I just can't remember. But uh, Warrior doesn't win the belt. Then the next big show would be the Survivor Series, uh, built up as the Ultimate Maniacs. Um, probably one of the best legend tag teams that never had a run that is glorified as being one of the best tag teams of all time. I think they worked one Saturday night's main event, but on this show they were supposed to um, Warrior and Savage go up against Razor Ramon and Ric Flair. Um, just things went bad. Warrior uh, was suspended and left, and I, I don't think he came back until 95 uh, when he does the WrestleMania spot uh, against Triple H, does the King of the Ring against Jerry the King Lawler. I think he works in In Your House, and then he's gone again, <laughs> only to pop up in WCW years later, and then we wouldn't see him again unless you think about that match against Orlando Jordan in Spain until WrestleMania 30 when he goes in the Hall, a Hall of Fame, and then he passes away the next day. But uh, that Warrior return... At WrestleMania, probably one of the um, one of the big highlights, if not for the Brett Piper match um, of uh, the night. Uh, Savage vs. Flair is really good as well, but I think a lot of people remember how bad the finish of the Sid um, versus Hogan match, where people say Sid didn't want to lose, Sid kicked out on accident, or he did it on purpose because he didn't want to take the three. Um, and then on top of that. Um, Papa Shango was late with his run in. It just was a cluster, but Warrior coming out was just a big shot in the arm. And then on top of that, which is a whole nother video, people didn't even think that the Warrior was the Warrior, that they had a fake Warrior um, because he just looked smaller because the, uh, the, the, the no steroids were allowed at the time. He just didn't seem like he was in the monstrous shape that he was around WrestleMania 6, VI, WrestleMania 7. And people thought that they were using his brother or just some other guy that they slapped the warrior paint on. He had cut his hair. It didn't look the same. Just uh, all those. You can watch another video on that about the uh, the false rumors of the fake Ultimate Warrior or Ultimate Warrior's death and being replaced by another dude. But probably one of the biggest returns from my childhood that I didn't even know was a return.